five main characters in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Charlie, Frank, Dennis, Dee, and Mac. Charlie Kelly is the janitor at Patty's Pub, where the entire main cast works. He's a very unpredictable, unstable man that lives in squalor, but he often claims to enjoy his lifestyle. He is often seen engaging in wild activities from huffing glue to making friends with rats to roaming the sewers of Philadelphia. He lives with a man named Frank Reynolds, who despite his wealth, chooses to live in a life of squalor just like Charlie and also enjoys it. The leader of the group, Dennis Reynolds, is a narcissistic control freak who will do everything in his power to maintain his grasp over the group. It has also been insinuated at times that he is a serial killer, although this has never been confirmed. D, Dennis's twin sister, is often made fun of for her appearance and referred to as a bird. Her ideas are often ignored by the group, and she constantly tries to be a helpful member, although no one pays her any attention. Finally, Mac, Dennis's roommate, is the son of a felon who is always trying to demonstrate his masculinity to the group. Throughout the show, he transitions from in shape to fat to in shape again, all the while claiming he is in peak physical condition. The pilot episode of the show was shot by a few friends with only equipment they had laying around on no budget, yet somehow the group managed to create a cast of characters so compelling that regardless of the actual quality of the show, it was highly entertaining. Why exactly it has been so successful is what we will be analyzing today. The interactions between the characters are very complex and multi-layered, giving many different angles for jokes. The oxymorons present within all of the personalities are also very clearly shown, and this irony is very useful for comedic material. Finally, it is the simple absurdity of the show that makes it so great to watch. An example of one of the complex relationships between characters is the case of Charlie and Frank. In one episode, it is revealed that Frank might be Charlie's father, which is absurd considering the strange activities they engage in together. The two are unbothered by this, however, and continue on with their lives as usual. Later on, it is revealed that Charlie's mother is a prostitute completely contradictory to her innocent image. This further explains how Frank could be Charlie's father because of his affinity for banging wars. And this clip here shows exactly why a contrast in two personality traits can be so funny. Note Charlie's mom in the background. Ah, uh, Charlie, I, I hate to break this to you, man, but, but based on the story that you just told me, I think your mother was a prostitute. <laughs> what? Yeah. Come on, man. I'm just saying, based on that story that you just told me, I'm fairly certain that those Santas were running a train on your mom for money. No, dude, they, they would just give my mom money and go in the... Uh... Yeah. Chew on that for a second. Let that settle no. in. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Okay, but no, just relax. relax. No. Are you okay? No. Jeez, let's get you out of here. Let's no. Get you out of here. Merry no. Christmas, Mrs. Kelly. Just no. Relax. Relax. No. This is no. Awesome. Another example of this is Max's insistence on the fact that he is straight, regardless of what the cast or audience thinks. And then. Well, I'm gay. Yeah. No shit. But it is quite simply the absurdity of the show that makes it so great. In one episode, the main cast of characters meets a crackhead named Cricket. Horse riding pants. Charlie, you can't get a horse. Why not? Because it's crazy. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it any crazier than having a, a dog that bites or sheds or a cat that poops in a box while it's biting you? You know, it's biting you. Oh, you guys! Cricket! Cricket! There, there you are! are. What are you doing? I'm working on my moves. What moves? For my musical. I'm writing a musical, you guys. It's about life on the streets. Archangel has to live on the streets and fight crime. What? That's great. Where are our drugs? Yeah, the drugs. Oh, I sold the drugs. Good. Give us the money. Oh, now. Spent the money. Spent the money on these sweet ass kettle drums. Look at these. Those are trash cans. Trash cans, cricket. In another episode, the main cast creates a board game that involves consuming alcohol via an IV drip. You can't mainline beer because it's got bubbles in it. Yeah, yeah. we tried. It was bad. Yeah. I'm not sure it's safe for people to put those beverages directly Time. into their. And here are a few more clips showing just how absurd this show can get. Oh! Whoa! Good night, dude! Good night, bitch! And you? Beak! No! Where's the rum? Ah! Ah! Run, ham! Um, you want crack? Yeah, crack cocaine. <laughs> The lonely, sad, slutty, bitchy whore. I am shattered to pieces! The boys are out tonight, huh? Baby! News flash, asshole! 
Well, maybe you shouldn't dress like a bumblebee, bitch. Am I gay for God? You betcha. I'm As you can see, it is the overall craziness of the show that truly makes it memorable. The techniques of making jokes from the complex relationships of the characters and the crazy activities they engage in, as well as the contradictions within the personalities of the cast make the show stand out amongst others, and it is truly one of a kind.